And what Disney did instead was, oh, I'm going to build you a fourth theme park. I'm just going to maximize the space in the four theme parks I already have. Look. and talk about the things we love go to the places we love the most yes in our favorite place collectively as a friend group as individuals just as human souls having an experience on this earth we love walt disney world the most and at d23 their annual event to let folks know what is cooking and brewing over there in all things disney the movies the tv shows both major American parks, really all across the world. Just one of the what's happening at Disney and announcements as expected were made. And we're going to go over some of the big changes happening at Walt Disney World because as we've learned through the Splash Mountain experience, Disney adults tend to hold very near and dear things that maybe they yeah. don't make sense. Exactly. And what I'm going to start off with is to say that unlike Splash Mountain, right, because I'm the... Splash Mountain, we both love this ride. It means a lot to us. We talked about it. It's on the channel. We, we have a whole episode just about Splash Mountain and its transition over to Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which we think is a good ride unto itself. Yeah, but if you want to hear our full analysis, there's a whole video about it. But this is a different situation because the thing we're going to start off and talk about first is one of the big changes coming to Disney World is Tom Sawyer Island and the ferry that kind of gets you around sure. and toots its horn when you're outside Haunted Mansion or reminds it even exists is going away in replacement for something cars themed cars related area is going to be developed we're going to talk about the other things coming to the park as well but specifically the magic kingdom but let's start there because i know it's where people are going to have their feathers ruffled the most what do you think about the announcement that not only are things getting rethemed now in the magic kingdom but things are going to be changing yeah. permanently i am a crazy person when it comes to the uh the changes in the park right because I am a radical Walt quotist, is what I'll call. Uh, Walt Disney had a quote that was talking about how, like, Disney World needs to, or the Disney parks always need to be growing, changing, evolving. And I believe in no sacred mouses, is basically how I, how I describe it. Where it's like, everything, everything and anything is up for a change right now some things are unchangeable like we're never going to be able to take down the castle Ever. at magic kingdom Ever. but the amount of times that it's gotten a color change yeah. or there's a cake well, once cake here you know like yeah. that's i am all for that yeah right but we're talking about like every ride and every experience is up for change and so you're right exactly and i think the difference here specifically is like splash mountain was good the problem is the ip was terribly outdated the ride was in disrepair right. and so you needed to gut that one way or the other so you rethemed it what's different now is i understand splash mountain being more beloved you are lying to me if you're telling me you know the average person the one out of every five thousand maybe sure. but like that you one of your more beloved Walt Disney World experiences was Tom Sawyer Island in the ferry. I'm sure. I don't believe you. Because to your point, what you're saying about like sacred mouses and things that just never, people that just feel like nothing should yeah. ever, ever go away. Respectfully, what you're doing is you're just trying to hold on to a moment of your life that was better. Yes. Because when you were 10, this thing was here and you wish you were still 10. It's okay to be 40. Yeah and realize that things in Disney World will change. So when, you can still like it. When we talked about uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, right? I made the, I, I talked about how the reason why Deadpool and Wolverine is so great is because you've cultivated this audience, not of new 10 year olds that are going to enjoy this thing, but you're cultivating a 10 year old from 2008 yeah. is what you're doing. And this person has been on this ride this whole time. Right. And when it comes to Disney world, it was built at a time or Disneyland specifically, because magic kingdom is what we're talking about. And specifically Frontierland. Disneyland was built when Walt Disney didn't have anything. There was nothing really. It was Mickey mouse, kind of Donald Duck, the Seven Dwarves, and Snow White. Like, that was what he had when Disneyland opened. Maybe Dumbo and Pinocchio, but he didn't have the, uh, they didn't have the entertainment empire that they have today. And 
back in that time, they had westerns was the big movie that was the big film genre that was the biggest export that film had out of north america it's why you can understand why disneyland built a star a, a uh, superhero land yeah. basically because those the movies just the the, the genre is so prevalent right and so frontierland gets built at both magic kingdom and disneyland because Davy Crockett and Tom Sawyer were huge at the time. King of the Wild Frontier. But now that just isn't the case, right? Kids, families, people. I can't tell you the last time that I sat down in a movie theater excited to watch a Western. Well, it's also just like, you know, the things change and that's okay. But yeah. it, it, to your point, the, the nobody goes to Walt. I'm sorry, not nobody. That's just too broad a brush. But like, if... If anything in Disney World was going to be tweaked or just completely taken away and revamped, are you going to miss the shooting range? Yeah, right. Are you going to really actually miss that ferry, or is it just kind of comforting it to is. know that it's there? And I'm not discrediting that either, yeah. because I understand that you go to Disney World because of the Disney World things. And what I would tell you is the ferry and Tom Sawyer Island are so inconsequential to yeah. your trip unless there's just somebody out there that I'm, this listening that that was their favorite thing it's why wouldn't you want to see what Disney can develop in the year 2024, 25, 26 both in, instead Walt of just Dis a big boat Walt Disney World and Disneyland both had picnic areas when they first opened right like that was like a huge selling point was that you could have a picnic at the park so yeah eventually that went away and I think the one in Walt Disney World turned into Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Isn't so, that better? You know, so like, yeah, it's going to be different, but different doesn't mean bad right away. And I just, why, why do you refuse to move on and like allow times to evolve instead of just being stuck in the 60s. Because, I'll be perfectly honest, if you want to get stuck in that type of time period and ride that type of ride, in New England, we have a theme park called Canopy Lake Park. And that's what that is. And it's not by choice. It's because they can't... It's because they can't afford it. You're Walt Disney World. I want to see cars in Disney World. Also, I just think, like, if you're going to Disney World for, like, what I would call, like, the right reasons, it's because of all the new experiences you can have. I get it, right? Like, I am nobody's judge, and I also do not just blatantly discredit the idea that it's like, listen, when when I go to Bermuda, I want to see palm trees and the sand, sure. and I want to I sure. I I drink rum out of a coconut, and, yeah. and I don't want to go there and be like, we got new trees. You know? Yeah. Okay. All right. But at the same time, this, is, this park should be ever-evolving and all that stuff, too, but it's also like, guys, I think we know if you're a real Disney diehard nerd... You should be going for the new experience. You also know what are the things that are just are irreplaceable. Thunder the th Castle is irreplaceable. Thunder Mountain's not going anywhere. Pirates of the Caribbean. Splash Mountain didn't go anywhere. It got rethemed because the ride didn't work anymore, so they took it as an opportunity to make it something new. But you're right, the guts, the building, everything else about it's the same. It just got from working disrepair to working properly in a new way, right? But we know that the ride, like, there's just Sir Pirates of the Caribbean, there's just certain Space Mountains never the going. Jungle Cruise. Space Mountains never going away, guys. And the reason that that's never going away, I'm going to bring up this example like I did you off the air. This reeks to me of Choco Taco. Yeah. Where about a year ago or two years ago, whatever, it's so hard to keep track of time these days. The company that makes Choco Tacos, I think it's Klondike, I don't even know. They were like, we're not going to make them anymore. And the internet went into this uproar. It's like, sure. how can you not make it them? It happened with Twinkies, too. And it's like, guys, do you think they're going to stop making Choco Tacos because sales are so high? Because yeah. things are going so good? Yeah. Or do you think they looked at it and they go, no one's buying these things. We're not going to. It's not worth making anymore. Yeah. And so if you really, really look at the Tom Sawyer Island and the big ferry boat. Yeah. That is not why you're going to Disney World, because if it was always packed, they wouldn't get rid of it. Also, they wouldn't consider it expendable. Also, here's the thing that nobody has been talking about. I haven't seen this at all being said in any of the Disney D23 like post stuff. And that is Universal went ahead and built a third theme park. They decided 
We're going to build Epic Universe. It's going to be state-of-the-art. It's going to be sleek, sexy, new, awesome. Nintendo's going to be there. Yeah. Universal Monsters. Everything that you've ever wanted is going to be there. And everybody was looking at Disney over the past several years who have just been telling you, maybe, possibly, I don't know. And everybody is like, should they need to have a fourth theme park. They really need to wow. And nobody is giving them credit for, oh, they put a whole fourth theme park in all of these announcements. They put a whole fourth theme park in Orlando without ever expanding their footprint. Because now that Epic Universe is happening, you're going to have to buy a convoluted ticket thing that I don't understand and I'm not going to give you an ice cream headache trying to explain, but you have to have like a five day ticket and only two of them are allowed to be at Epic universe and you have to spend the rest of the days at the other two parks or something. It's, it's nonsense, right? Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Like there's like, you have to buy a multi, it's a thing. I'm not going to give you an ice cream headache about it, but so to keep attendance though, you think that's the thing is to be able to distribute all of the attendance. And what Disney did instead was, Oh, I'm going to build you a fourth theme park. I, I'm just going to maximize the space in the four theme parks I already have. Let's talk about that. So the Magic Kingdom is getting another kind of expansion. They're getting is- another land. They're getting two lands. They're getting a, the finally forever wished, hoped, wanted villains land. What do you think about that? I am so stoked. I think it's a great idea because one of the things that we uh, you know, if you're it's like a deep Disney nerd, is there was an original idea for Disney's Animal Kingdom, right? Yeah. And the idea was going to be like the reason that on the sign is there's a, a dragon, is a there's a there's a dinosaur, there's an elephant, and then there's a, or then there's a dragon, right? Yeah. And it's supposed to be animals that used to live, animals that are alive right now, mythical. And, and mythical creatures. And the idea was going to be that there was going to be like this dark air aspect to it. Yeah. Where there'd be like a dark unicorn or uh, whatever. There's a great video about it if you go to uh, theme park expedition theme park. Uh, he talks about it. The Beastly Kingdom. There's a bunch of videos on them. There, absolutely. Defunct Land might have. Defunct been. Land definitely did one. So the point is always like there was this idea of having like a darker kind of idea, yeah. and maybe even like a whole castle, like a darker castle. Yeah. And that was so like it's such a good idea mm-hmm. because there you have the like literally if you go in and you park there and you rent a car, there's a hero's lot and a villain's lot. Yeah. And the villains in some regard are as popular or as or well, used they- as the protagonists. And so sure. in this case, having an area dedicated to them, I think, is a smash hit. Because Disney, we, everybody's like, you need a fourth park. Well, what would we theme it? And should villains have its own standalone? Yeah. Probably not. An extension of the Magic Kingdom? It's a great idea. Well, and again, it goes back to the whole thing of like, you know, your audience has grown up. You're, uh, there are far more adults and young adults that... Go love Walt Disney World. Keep going to Walt Disney World, and also love those villains. Yeah, and you market them heavily. You market Maleficent yes. heavily, right? And so it's like give them the representation because we don't need everything to be princesses and nice because there is a section of the fan base that does want to see those people. One of the things that's really going viral on TikTok for Disney is. They have the evil queen walking around. Yeah. Really just being as catty as catty. Just roasting the shit out of people. Just really giving these, you know, bitchy zingers. Yeah. And that, you know, you, there's a market for that. There's a market for for that. And I, I, I love the idea, like I said, where... People have been saying Disney needs a fourth park. Disney needs a fourth park. And you just have to ask yourself, we already have the whole thing about like classic Disney animals, the future and the world. So so here's the thing. And movies, what would the fourth thing be? Right. But so think about it this way, right? When you look at Magic Kingdom, right? Because that's like the the Holy Grail architect of like those with the hub and spoke, right? You have Adventureland, you have Frontierland, you have Fantasyland, and you have Tomorrowland, right? Those are the four lands that make up the Magic Kingdom. Right. And then there's like an entryway. And so Disney, what Disney went and announced at Walt Disney World was Villains Land, Cars Land, Monsters Inc. Land and Tropical America. That are that's four lands. That's your theme park, because if every single theme park has four lands, that's it. So they put a fourth theme park into their existing three at really no additional cost to you and i mean that in the sense of like your magic ticket kingdom ticket might be more expensive right yeah, sure. like like that price might go it up go, it won't go down but yeah it definitely won't go down but at the same time you don't have to now buy another park day you don't 
Like, because you're already going to Magic Kingdom. It's already there. You don't have to... You didn't have to extend your vacation because Magic... Because Disney World is now five days if you go to every park one day. What do you think of Dinosaur... Like, Dino Land USA has been something that's been... Probably sure. need to be replaced since it opened. It's always it was felt, always temporary. It always felt like a very afterthoughty kind of like this is the lowest thing that Disney has produced. And you know, because yeah. Animal Kingdom is beautiful and really well so thought out, and, to... and, and there's a lot of planning that goes into it. Yeah, and like they had when they had uh, Joe Brody, Joe Brody, Joe Brody. You know, go to these continents and learn yeah. these cultures, and then over here is a parking lot fair. Yeah, they decided that they're going to finally replace it. They've decided Zootopia will be the direction they go. So, no, Zootopia is going to be under the tree. Oh, so, okay. Zootopia is going to be under the tree and is going to replace uh, It's Tough to Be a Bug. That's what should be. So, that's going to be great because... That should be replaced. Because that's, you know, because again, times have moved on, so we can move on. The park is celebrating its 25th anniversary. Right. It's an opening day attraction. A Bug's Life is not something Disney it's has pursued. It's not relevant anymore. It doesn't, you know, it's not like they're making sequels to it. Yeah. So you find something new and you move on. And you move on. I, so what is it'll replacing Dino Land USA, which is interesting because uh, you'll, you'll see it if you go to like any of the defunct land, like Beastly Kingdom videos. Uh, they ran out of money at Animal Kingdom right at the end, and they could only build one of the lands. It was either going to be Beastly Kingdom or it was going to be Dino Land USA. Dino Land USA got chosen because the they could dinos. make it. And the, and, and the movie Dinosaur. The movie Dinosaur. And Eisner wanted to hype it up and yeah. thought that would be the way. Right. And, and that so, movie flopped. And so the movie flopped. The land is very meh. I know that it's great for kids because they have that like big giant play structure, but that's easily replaceable, right? You can build another play structure in there, but what they're retheming it to is now like they're calling it Central America, which I think is great because the thing that I was worried about for forever was Dinosaur is already a carbon copy of Indiana Jones at Disneyland, the Indiana Jones ride there. And so what I was really worried about was that they were just going to retheme the retheme of Indiana Jones back to Indiana Jones sure. because my pet peeve, my pet peeve and I cuz I don't care if you replace literally anything, right? I would have been cool if you tore Splash Mountain down and built Tiana's Bayou Adventure as something completely different, but I understand why we didn't. Anyway, uh I was I'm my pet peeve about theme parks is having multiple versions of the same thing at the American parks because for Christ's sake just give me something different yeah and I think that that's what they're doing in, yes I think that's what they're doing with with cars I think that's what they're going to be doing because animal kingdom the what what Disney World has a huge advantage over Disneyland, right? Is that Disneyland is basically the Magic Kingdom Plus. Yeah. Right? And now I know that you have with California Adventure is that second park out there in, in Los Angeles yeah. that lets them kind of have more of an expansive thing. That's where Marvel's campus is. Yeah, they really pack a lot in there. Like, right. It's very, very dense. It's very cool, but... It's surrounded by city. And there's nothing there's nothing quite like the idea of four very distinct locations. Even though Epcot and MGM are across the water from each other, you're definitely in different places when you go. Does the Animal Kingdom sometimes doesn't even feel like you're still in Orlando. You know yeah. what I mean? From how far away it is to just how immersive it is, whatever, whatever. But with that the the difference that they have obviously is just the animal kingdom is its own unique thing. And since the day it's open, it's had Africa and South America or Africa Asia. and Asia. The idea of having Central America, yeah. the animals, the culture. Well, being, and it, it, it just makes so much more sense than just everything's it's Zootopia. Also, right. Because they're animals. Yes. I also think that it's great because uh, what I heard of the Encanto portion of the Central America uh, land expansion is going to be is uh, everything to do with Antonio. Antonio is the boy at the beginning of the movie that gets his gift. He gets his gift today. Um, and he can talk to animals. And so, in theory, the ride is about going in and exploring his room and meeting animals. Great. So, you've done a great... Like, this is my thing with, like, Disney content creators on the internet and, like, people online that are very cynical about Walt Disney World is that, you know... You hear a thing and you don't like it and hate it immediately without knowing any of the details. And so, like, you heard Encanto is going into Animal Kingdom. And I remember seeing online a million people being like, this is, betrays Animal Kingdom and this is awful and this is so terrible. And then it's just like, oh, no, this is what the plan is. And the plan makes it 
it makes sense and as to why it's and, here. And there's also the just the underlying factor that you got to ask these things. So like, unfortunately, but you know, there's such an outrage when uh, Splash Mountain got replaced with Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And on the episode that we did about it, you know, I got to think that a lot of people had an issue because, and I'll say it this way: is they wanted Splash Mountain to be great again. Sure. And so if if that had been rethemed to Snow White, I think there would have been less outrage than there was when Tiana yeah. got the retheme, right? And so one thing you have to unfortunately take here into consideration is that the retheme going to, or the expansion going to Encanto and not something whiter, you sure. know what I mean? Unfortunately brings out the worst in some very bad people. Sure. And so I have to introduce to the conversation the idea that if a lot of people are mad about Encanto, which is logical, being added to this park, again, unfortunately, maybe it's because it's, you know, they would rather see Spider-Man than the Black Panther. You know what I mean? Sure. If we're doing an animal superhero. Is that, yeah, does, sure, does, sure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so there's other announcements that were also made. Yes. Uh, including, I want to get to this before, I know this isn't specifically to Disney World, but I do want to yeah. get your thoughts on this real quick before we sign off. Um, because it's one of our favorite Disney movies. We're seeing more about the sequel to Moana. She's got a little sister. Yeah. Uh, we were now seeing, like, you know, not a formal trailer, but yeah. more to the movie. Are you excited for Moana 2? I am. I'm really, I just like movies. <laughs> right? Uh, it's, we spent two years locked in our houses and nothing was being made, right? So we watched everything that we had. No new content was being made. The content that was kind of being made, it was tough. So we've had like a really bad stretch, right? Because we had all of lockdown and then we've had the recovery period. And so now if the lockdown was two years, the recovery period has been two years. So we're now coming out of that recovery period. So we're starting to see good movies again. There have been so many great movies released this year, Deadpool and Wolverine being a huge highlight of it. Twisters being a ton of fun as a summer blockbuster movie. And so... Right foot red. <laughs> I'm so excited for... Uh, Left hand yellow. That's, that's great. Brought to you by Hasbro. Rated R. <laughs> uh, having Moana 2 come out feels like it's actually a real movie. And I love real movies. <laughs> I'm excited for it because Moana is one of my favorite Disney movies, like top three. I love the soundtrack. I love the art style. I love the fact that she's a character that's not just chasing a boy. There is no boy. You know what I mean? And thank God she didn't fall in love with a 500-year-old demigod. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I mean? Or anything stupid like that. Uh, it's just not about a boy. It's not about saving a boy. It's about that there's a village that needs saving, and we didn't have to send a boy to do it. We sent a girl, and the movie is outstanding. And in a way that is better, I think, for young women than, like, The Little Mermaid, because it's like, you know... Uh, the Little Mermaid just gave up her entire life for a guy she hadn't met yet. Yeah. Just for a shot at him. Yeah. And that's less of a good message than, hey, my village is in trouble. I know I'm not supposed to go hit the water, but I'm going to go figure this out. Right? So just love the movie in general. And I have very high hopes for the sequel. I tend to not be a big sequel guy. Sure. Disney seems to do them well. I know Frozen 2 was well received. I didn't yeah. love it, but I know Frozen I liked Frozen 2 a lot. I think Frozen 2 is gen I'm actually not a big Frozen sure. guy. I realized watching Frozen 1 how much I loved Tangled. Because I always thought that Tangled was a high, high quality movie. I yeah, it was great. I just it's not exactly for me. I think sure. there are better ones like but it, but at the same time, um I am really, I like Moana so much that I'm excited that she's getting a sequel and they're doing the live action, right? The Rock is yeah. going to play Mo yeah. Maui in the live action movie. That's the plan. If you could just really quick put you on the spot before we sign sure. off, if you could pick a Disney movie to get a sequel that hasn't had one, what would it be? You know what? My answer for forever would have been Incredibles 3, but that got announced at D23. They are finally making that. Um, Meet the Robinsons 2. Okay. I would love Meet the Robinsons 2. I think Meet the Robinsons is a criminally underrated Disney film. I think it is full of very fun and interesting characters. And while you said movie, I always thought that it'd be perfect for a Disney Plus series. I think the world is ready for a goofy movie, too. There is a goofy movie, too. Oh, no. It's is an it? extremely goofy movie. Goofy goes back to college. Okay. Um, <laughs> maybe we don't need a third goofy movie <laughs> then. And uh, I'll just echo your sentiments. Big things coming to Walt Disney World, to the Disney Universe, D3 is always worth checking out. We appreciate you for checking out what we've got going on. We are available on social media all over the place at not too old to show. 
we are going to be giving you Disney content, Marvel content, movie content, the world content, whatever we feel like content, but we do love Disney World. And the big moral of all this as we sign off, I think, is that, like, listen, guys, change is okay. And there are certain things that, you know, Disney will never get rid of and break your heart, but I just have yet to see them add something and have it be like, no, it, it was better before. Yeah. Like, as much as I love Splash Mountain, I understand, right? You want to talk about source material? Maybe we don't want you directed to Tom Finn. To, 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 Tom to, Sawyer. To Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, where, where the N-word is very prevalent in both yeah. of those novels? He wasn't called My Friend Jim. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if we're kind of looking at Splash Mountain yeah. and being like, ooh, ooh, maybe we don't need a big ferry boat that reminds us of times past. You know what I mean? Sure. It, that specific ca- snapshot of it anyway. Things that go there are going to get better. They kind of felt like they dropped Seven Dwarfs Mine Train in the middle of Fantasyland, and it's awesome that it's there. It adds to the park. Tiana adds to the park. Tron adds to the park. This will add to the park. And when they inevitably change something else that you love and it gets better, it's okay to admit to yourself that it is. Yeah. And all I would encourage you to do, whether it be a movie role, a theme park announcement, just something that's coming down the way, is give it an opportunity before you hate it. Yeah. Because maybe you won't. And if you go into something with it already being a flop, in your mind, it probably will be trust us we spent five years in the wrestling business <laughs> we love you at not too old Two show is where you can find us all over the place go to disney world if you do let us know we'll meet you there because we're always just looking for an excuse and uh, we are not too old to talk about do or experience the things we love my name's chris i'm eddie and we'll see you real soon bye you say we'll see you real soon